And uh, this is, uh, we're starting with Brett Hogelmas. Many of uh, you know him as a nuclear titan, the leader of the Nuclear Titan series. Uh, he is the director, managing director of Energy Impact Center, but he is a entrepreneur. He uh, has turned his focus to climate energy advocacy. Earlier this year, we gave him the Special Achievement Award for his Titan series, educational series, uh, at the Advanced Reactors Summit 6. Uh, he has uh, had entrepreneurial experience in the uh, drone industry, in robotics, lunar rover controller for NASA, a concept electric car for Panasonic, and an automating solar manufacturing processes for nano solar. So highly accomplished in this area, and uh, we're delighted uh, to have him uh, focusing on nuclear, advanced nuclear. So uh, some of you are probably asking, what's the uh, podcast guy doing up here talking about finance? So during each episode, I mostly like to keep my opinions to myself because the show is really about interviewing the great titans of industry. Uh, but David thought this would be a good opportunity for me to blow off some steam, so here's a chance for you guys to hear my opinion. And all this time, I've been comparing the nuclear industry's pedagogy against my former background in Silicon Valley, and I got to say, what I see is a bunch of excuse making. So I'll offer a framework for capital raising and company building that's counter to the commonly accepted wisdom within this crowd. But you already invited me, so it's too late now. First, a bit on the importance of this industry. Say whatever you want about holding hands with the renewables advocates, who, for the most part, hate you. If climate change is going to be solved, it is going to be entirely through nuclear. Entirely. Because the challenge to solve climate change isn't to prevent new emissions. The challenge to solve climate change is to remove the existing thousand gigatons of CO2 that we already put in the air. If you were to go zero on global emissions in every single sector, industry, transportation, heat, agriculture, electricity, climate change would still keep happening at the exact same rate that it is today. You're just not increasing the rate at which it's happening, right? So we gotta keep focused on removing the thousand gigatons that we emitted over the last couple hundred years. And according to the laws of physics, there is no other energy source that has the energy to carbon footprint ratio necessary to achieve this, okay? So nuclear is what is going to solve climate change. So what don't I like about the nuclear startup rhetoric that I so commonly hear? One, the capital raising strategy. Two, the speed or lack thereof. Three, the role of the CEO. Four, the regulatory strategy, and five, the fixed pie mentality. When I was in grad school, I went around trying to raise money for an internet startup. I met with 80 different investors on Sand Hill Road, and I raised zero dollars. A year later, I started a drone company, which in 2011, had negative public perception. They were thought of as military devices. It had high capital requirements. It was an aerospace company. And it had huge regulatory barriers. Does this ring a bell to anybody here? In three conversations, I pulled in $6 million, which back then, for a 25-year-old newbie entrepreneur in the robotic sector, is what you call first of a kind. So what did I learn between try one and try two? Well, in those 80 conversations, my two big takeaways were that there are actually a whole range of different types of investors. And what they want is to maximize upside and minimize risk. 
By the way, this process of audience segmentation and mapping their needs is the exact same process as selling to customers. So who are the right types of investors for the next gen nuclear? Given the profile that it's a new technology, it's going to be venture capitalists with interest in frontier technologies or family offices who care about climate. And if you're not personally connected to a billionaire, you should focus on venture capitalists. So how do you maximize upside? Well, you're presenting them an energy product that's potentially so competitive, it could take over the entire energy market. If you can present a product that delivers at $25 a megawatt hour, which isn't that far from existing plants, you can capture several trillion dollars a year. That's a lot of upside. How do you minimize risk? Well, there are three types of risk that VCs look at. You can think of them almost like three legs of a stool. Technology, business, and regulatory. Now, venture capitalists are comfortable with taking one of those risks, but only one. Good thing is you get to choose which, and that's where the variety of businesses come in. Now, I hear a lot of talk about the need for patient capital. So I'm going to address my first point of contention, speed. There is not enough sense of urgency amongst the new nuclear companies that I see. You see, the incentives for venture capitalists and climate change are actually perfectly aligned. They both need to move fast. So if we're going to solve climate change, we're going to need at minimum 10 thousand gigawatts of new nuclear in less than 20 years. 10 thousand gigawatts in less than 20 years. That's mathematically what is required to reverse climate change. That means you'll be selling at least a few billion in product in the next five. That's good enough for the venture capitalists. Now, if in your mind you are running through a host of reasons that it takes more than five years to bring a nuclear reactor to market, those are your problems to solve. That's what your business is. That's your job as CEO, not to design a new reactor. Your job is to build an organization that captures market share as fast as possible. Now, if you want to be the leader of a company that designs paper reactors, take your time. That's your prerogative. But if you have trouble raising capital and care more about saving the world than your ego, perhaps consider hiring a CEO who already has access to the capital you need and a real sense of urgency. And that brings me to cost. If your reactor is so much better and a 1970s light water reactor, just build a small version of it, and it should still be profitable. Here in DC, I see 12-story apartment buildings go up in 18 months for $40 million. They have a lot of steel, concrete, and piping too. No more excuses on cost. Design it to be built fast, small, cheap, and digitally controlled. Cost is your number one priority. The real world does not know or care what passive safety is. But Brett, the regulator does care what passive safety is. Okay, great. Then to eliminate regulatory risk in the eyes of an investor, your strategy should be to find a customer with no nuclear regulator. There are over 100 countries out there that need cheap electricity and have the sovereign right to build nuclear under the auspices of a Department of Energy, just like we did. The logic that you need an independent nuclear regulator is based on the premise that nuclear poses a disproportionate hazard, which it doesn't. Do you need a nuclear regulator to build skyscrapers that hold thousands in lives of peril if the constructor doesn't size his steel correctly or if an aircraft flew into it? No, you need to follow ASME and civil engineering codes 
and make pragmatic decisions between risk and cost. When it comes to potential hazard, we need to tell the world we're not special. A nuclear accident does not have any more consequence than a normal building if it caught on fire or if it falls in an earthquake. In fact, as Fukushima proved, far, far less. Find a regulator who feels the same way and will apply the same scrutiny to you as they would to an apartment building. Did you think that the gold standard meant that the regulator does your engineering work for you? If you were going to design safe reactors regardless, do it without all the red tape and save yourself 10 years and a billion dollars. The reasons our startups are not raising enough capital is because their leaders are not acting like businessmen. They're acting like academics. Academics stay with what they know, where they feel safe even if there's no market for electricity. Academics are used to a fixed pie, where there's only so much money from grants, only so much money from the DOE, only so much spare space at labs, only so much attention from the regulator. Businessmen acquire private capital and use that capital to access more lab time or more regulator time. And they don't complain that there's too much competition. They thrive. In 2010, there was no money in the drone sector. By 2014, my competition and I had collectively raised a billion dollars. We were all in it together. We hyped each other up. We learned that a rising tide floats all boats. It may sound counterintuitive, but you want your competitors to raise money. The more they do, the more investors are educated, there's a greater sense of inevitability and a greater fear of them missing out. There's also more customer education. And if you're the best, your future employees are being trained on someone else's dime. You are up against the fossil industry and time, not each other. So drop this the government should pick a few winners mentality. You're sounding like a professor, not like an entrepreneur. It is beholden upon us to save the world from climate change. It is our opportunity to save 6 million lives a year from air pollution and provide fresh water to a billion people. Let's not let the old ways of thinking hold us back. Thank you.